Good morning, everyone. Um, can y'all hear me all right? Can I please get the spotlight here, please? Thank you, spotlight. Thank you very much. Are y'all hearing me all right? If you can hear me, please say yes. Just type yes in the chat, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you for um, tuning online. We have about, right now, just as we begin, about 250 over people that is just logging in. Um, and thank you for joining us um, for our last installment for this uh, virtual training version 1.0. I want to just be very uh, excited to tell everyone that this is not the end, this is just the beginning. We will be having virtual 2.0 coming very soon uh, to everyone. Uh, in the next couple of days, we will be updating our page on Facebook and for all Redfield KW Malaysia people, you will be updating this on Workplace. Um, I can I ask all the virtual support right now, some of the virtual support, if you could um, write down our Redfield or K Power by KW uh, Facebook page on the chat box quite quickly right now, the link on the chat box quickly, so that we would be able to, if you could connect and, and, and uh, click, click on that page and like us and follow us so that you will be able to actually um, get updates on our latest uh, that's happening right now. We're going to do many trainings. It just gives us a little bit of previews that we'll be having trainings in Chinese language. There are five to six sessions that we are going to highlight the models in Chinese so that we can help um, Chinese speaking agents to get better con better perspective of the content from the MRE and shift. We'll be doing BM trainings as well and English training. So it will be three times more um, opportunities of trainings than we are seeing right now in our first series. So if you can just like us, follow us so that you can get the latest updates right now from us. Now, before we start the morning, I just want to welcome everyone again. Again, we are hitting the 300 number right now. We are expecting about 400 over people to join us eventually. Um, yesterday, we have about 550 unique IDs join in to our session, um, and everyone is hungry to understand what's going on in the shift, how we're going to move forward in the shift. Now, before I, I, I go on, I also want to welcome everyone, welcome especially our KW Asia region family. I, I believe we have KW Vietnam, KW Indonesia, KW Philippines, KW Thailand as well in this call. Um, but I want to just go and just have a quick conversation with the regional OP of KW Indonesia. Can I have the virtual support quickly turn on the, the, uh, the mic for Linda Vijaya? I think she's on the call. Linda, can you hear me all right? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Can someone please spotlight her video right now? Hey Linda. Hey, um, yo, hey Linda. Wow. Um, I'm in the hey, spotlight. Uh, thank you for joining us for the past two weeks. Um, there, there are a lot of lot of uh, 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 additional motivation from all of us in KW Malaysia, where we see people like yourself from across um, regions. That the technology has already opened up boundaries and all that. So Linda, could you quickly share some ahas that you have um, in the past? few days that we have joined our training. What are some of your aha? So I think your perspective will give all of us um, a different angle to look at as well. So go ahead, Linda. Okay. Thank you, John, for, for the time. I mean, like, uh, this is a privilege because uh, we all know that uh, during this uh, COVID-19 and all the lockdown, uh, we need to be uh, there for each other. And then I see that uh, from Keller really Malaysia has already stopped, uh, stepped in and then uh, try to really uh, gather all the Asia ROP and then I for that uh, really thank you. And then I think this is uh, also from uh, the leaders, I mean like the heart from the leaders, I mean like uh, all the Keller Williams leaders in uh, headquarters uh, have already uh, shared this and this is the time for sharing to each other. It's not again that uh, you are you are alone, but uh, it's it's we are we are here of uh, together. So that's one thing that uh, I, I got from uh, from from this. And then a lot of our hearts, that's for sure. We learn together, and then uh, we need to double double down uh, in in Malaysia term. But for me, it's double up everything every <laughs> event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and. Um, uh, I, I think uh, what, what uh, I, I learned from you guys as well is uh, the coordination that I, I, I really amazed. I mean, like, uh, 
I I can see that uh, in this in this um, um, in this uh, situations we have to be really creative. Uh, we cannot just uh, stay at home and then do nothing. But uh, this is something that uh, we need to to uh, to get together and then do something in in extra. So and this all will pass. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I think that's my ahas, the biggest ahas that I got. Thank you very much, Linda. Everyone give Linda a thumbs up and a love heart or whatever that, that she's been to share some of her thoughts. Thank you very much, Linda. Can I change the spot like this? Thank you, Linda. Thank uh, you. It's great to hear from leaders from different different parts of the world. Um, some of the privilege that we have in KW Worldwide Family that we are 43 regions leadership. Um, I, I just shared with some of us, uh, we are actually having, we have, we had a, I had a call, I have a message uh, from Andres Anesta. Uh, not Ernesto, sorry, Andreas from uh, KW Mexico, and he's willing to uh, come in and even do training for us. Um, when he saw how KW Malaysia is running so many programs and all that, he reached out to one of my colleagues, Sing Fei, and eventually I kind of connected with him on WhatsApp because I met him uh, in a, a call, private call and I met him uh, in Dallas Family Reunion and he, he volunteered that if he could serve KW Malaysia um, and all the way from Mexico. So I, I, I am, we are very privileged that we have a huge family globally in a worldwide family. And, and, and what we are going through right now is really unprecedented because it is a global battle of combat against this virus. It is not really um, something that we have experienced before. Um, and the last time the whole world was at war was in the 1941, right? And this is a different kind of war that we are in. Um, so I, I, I just want to share with everyone that we are all very blessed that we are all together and I'm very grateful for all of you to be on this call because your presence and your stories and your success keep us going. I was just having a, a conversation, someone just sent me a text yesterday evening right after we finished our training um, and, and I think it was Christopher Wong from our Market Center One. Um, he just quickly sent me a message and said, bro, I just closed one deal today. Uh, and, and, I, and I asked him, what's, and you tell me the whole story of the deal, but he managed to close a deal during MCO. It was a sale. Uh, even though it's not a fantastically big sale, but it was a sale. And one of the things I asked him, um, I, I asked Christopher, I'm quite sure it's not because of your hairstyle that people bought property from you. Because he has, a, he has, a, he has an awesome hairstyle. It's probably the best, best hairstyle in the entire group that we have here in Malaysia. Um, but it's because he was drastically following up and doing his follow-up and following up the owners, following up the seller, buyers, um, and, and the, 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 the training and the environment that you all created for all of us to be in um, gave him that push for him and his wife and his their business to push and keep following up with the client. So I, I, I think in this shift, right, great, con congratulate him, yes. Uh, in this shift, it is vital that we all stay in an environment where we are rallying each other, where we are focusing and thinking about how how to behave in this shift. So these are some of the things that I think is already happening. There are a lot of success stories. I'm getting a lot of success stories, even how an agent did virtual viewing and did the sale. And we will come and share some of these stories very soon as we are compiling all these stories. So keep the stories coming so guys, we can um, publish it and we can share with you uh, how these people are doing. Today, we want to again focus on shift. Now for those who are not joining us for the first time, anyone here, who is joining us for the first time, please say I. Anyone who's joining us for the first time today, please say I. Anyone? Oh, the content that we are, there you go, Clement. Welcome, Clement. Welcome, Zhe Xiang. Um, any, welcome, Lin. This are, welcome, Siung An. Uh, welcome, Angela Chong. Welcome, welcome. This is your, the first time uh, you are here joining our program. I um, just want to be clear that the content that we are talking about here, it is not something that is created by us. It's something that is based on Gary Keller's best national bestseller or New York Best Times bestseller called Shift. Um, this book was written somewhere in 2009 during the global financial crisis. And Gary Keller realized that there was a shift going on in the marketplace and in, in, that, in any shift, um, he has designed 12 tactics to help real estate agents to use the model of the million dollar real estate agent and focus on their business and how can they be successful in this journey. So get this book. This is, this is um, 
a good book and a lot of the contents that you are getting yesterday and today is really focusing on the content of shift and today in shift we are focusing on tactic seven now everybody take down that tactic seven tactic seven it's on page um, 135 Tactic 7135 with the virtual assistant can help me put that down in the chat box so that everyone can go back and refer this um, as we move forward. Now, this is, I want to read a quotation that is on the first page of Tactic 7. Okay, the quotation is this. The ability to learn faster than your competitors may be the only sustainable competitive advantage. I repeat, the ability to learn faster than your competitors may be the only sustainable competitive advantage. Now, in this market right now, you will be facing high competition because the volume of transaction will be reduced in a certain shift market. And in that reduction of volume, what would happen is suddenly the opportunities is lesser. And that's, that's the real reality of it. Meaning if you don't focus on winning this market share that is lesser, you may not sustain. And one of the ways to win the market, market, shift, market, market share is to really understand what your competitors are doing. How are they doing in that particular market? How are they helping you price the property? Even as an owner today, if you are owner watching this training right now, how you price your property ahead of the market to get buyers to buy in right now. But if your goal is to get a sale as an owner, you need to focus on how can you get someone to help you price in your property. Now, these are some of the conversations that we'll be having. I'm very blessed that we are joined by our favorite George. George is now our favorite, one of our favorite virtual trainers. Uh, George, uh, team leader from MC2. And we will be joined by Ganesh Mahindran, uh, a productivity coach uh, from MC1 um, and Ganesh specializes in, in the area of exclusive listing and in the area of how to price certain properties to make sure that they sell and how he has conversation with the client. So I would thought that today we have a three-corner conversation, but George will kind of take us through the theoretical element of Shift Tactics 7. Are you guys ready to go? If you are, if you are ready to go, everyone say go. Oh. All right. Okay, George, are you there on the call? Okay. Uh, oh, yes. George. Okay, good, good. <clears throat> good morning, everyone. The, good to see you again. Uh, uh, <clears throat> my name is George Tan from uh, the MC2 Refill. I'm excited today because the, it's a continuation of a series to help us as agents to become more effective. The, if you, you were locked in yesterday, one we were talking about basically it's important for us to look at those people that are motivated to buy and sell because in a shifting market, the buyers and sellers, they, they, are, they are a smaller group. It takes a lot more work to find them and that's why yesterday we talked about the importance of doubling down your lead generation so they can find them. The same thing with today's topic in terms of going to a tactic uh, number seven on pricing. When you're actually working on pricing and talking with a seller or in this case discussing pricing with a buyer, hopefully those people are motivated to sell. That means for the sellers, they're actually motivated to sell because if they are not motivated to sell, like I mentioned, you can motivate them, you can help them understand, but if they are not motivated to sell themselves, it's going to be a challenge for you. Okay, so important thing is find those motivated sellers that really need the agent's help to sell their properties during these shifted, uh, shifting markets where it's more, uh, it requires more skill. And today I'll go in to look at some of the, the tactics that will help, that will help you. Because it's not a matter of just pricing it high or low. There are a lot of strategies and tactics you can do in terms of as an agent to help the seller understand why we need to go in and price the property in a certain way. Now, before I start, let me just share a, a story because this example is important. It's found in the, in the, in the book shift, but it helps explain basically the fact that who has that power during the shifting market to decide basically on pricing. This story talks about the, a, a buy exam there's three uh, would-be attorney. They basically is going to go for this exam and uh, they basically forgot to bring their pen. So when they went into the, the exam, they asked the text proctor, do you have a pen for us? It's so important that the text proctor have pen, but only one pen. So three would-be attorneys and one pen. 
So the 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 first basically attorney says that I'll pay, you know, I'll buy the pen from you. I'm willing to pay one dollar. The second attorney says basically one to the proctor, I'm willing to pay two dollars. And then the third, basically, the attorney says to the proctor, I'm willing to pay three dollars for the pen. So the pen also for three dollars. <throat> when the next bar exam came, all the would-be attorneys know that they need to bring their pen. And all the test proctor knows that they need to carry extra pen. So during the bar exam one, it so happened that only, the, the only one attorney forgot to bring a pen. So he, thought, he, he asked the, 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 the test proctor, anybody got a pen? And the first, first test proctor says, I have a pen for you, but I will sell it for you for $3. Then the, when he says that, the second proctor came in and said that I will sell the pen for you for $2. And before the, the attorney can bring up the $2 bill, the third attorney says, I will sell the pen for you for $1. What can we learn from this particular story? That basically in the seller's market, so the power of pricing is in the hands of the seller. But when we are moving to a buyer's market, who actually decides basically in terms of pricing? It's really the buyer. The buyer decides the price, the pricing. That's why it's so important for the seller to know in the shifting market, we need to price it correctly because otherwise the buyer will not come in and actually look at the properties or buy the property. Okay, it's important to keep in mind we are moving the buyer seller buyer's market right now. The, the buyer has the power to actually decide how much they want to pay. The market determines the pricing. Okay, let me go into my slide right now and show a little bit of what we're going to do today. Can you, can you all see my slide? So we're covering the shift, uh, uh, shift tactic number seven, seller pricing strategy. And of course, I've got Ganesh, Ganesh with us today also. I'll go in to get, ask Ganesh uh, to make sure that basically he shares with us. But Ganesh, are you there? Yes, I'm here, John. Okay, good. Now, nah? so we'll basically communicate to, together. And John, anytime you have questions, feel free to jump in. Let's get a perspective of the pricing strategy for this particular shifting markets. So when the market shifts towards a bias market, the listing inventory takes a longer time to, to sell. So in this buyer market, so the real estate becomes a commodity. Now only properties in good condition and priced correctly will sell in this bias market. That's why the pricing and the condition is important. Now the price can correct a bad condition. I've sold basically a house, uh, basically that is run down, no windows, no doors, and the owners want to build a house, but along the way, financially couldn't complete it, so the house basically was an abandoned house. You know, so the question is, if the price was right, even a house is abandoned, you can actually buy it. And that house was bought by a contractor because he says it doesn't matter any condition, he can fix it. He got it basically for a very good price. A 20 by 60 house in USJ, a corner unit, he bought it for close to about 600 plus. Uh, today, most corners are going for a, a, a really, really close to a million dollars. But condition won't correct bad pricing. That's why it's important for the condition to be right. So correct pricing represents 80% of your marketing effort. So today, when we learn how to price or the property correctly, we are actually helping the owner and helping ourselves to make sure that the properties can actually be sold in the market. We also need to, you also need to go in and like the John mentioned then, not just to be a salesperson, you need to shift our thinking that we start to look ourselves as consultant. We become consultant to sellers in a buyer's market. When house sold in a matter of days, agents are basically undervalued. It's so easy to sell. I remember basically about 10 years back when I was selling houses one, basically some houses are sold within, within, a, within a few days. That's why we have to go in and start viewing at night also. Because if we don't do that one, the next, the next day one, the, the, the house could be actually sold. So that was basically a seller's market. Today is a different market. But now the customers need you and me a lot more. Because they need your, 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 your expertise in the pricing strategy, your market knowledge, your knowledge of financing options, how to work with banks. They also need your negotiation skills to get the house at the best possible price that can be sold in the market now. And they also want your buyers. You don't see owners today say basically, I want to sell uh, my, the, my house by myself because it's going to be very challenging. So that is the perspective of the market today. 
But the truth is that in the market, this market today remains full of people who generally want to buy and want to sell. The question is at what price? Now, I'm not sure whether you believe that. So if you believe that today, you can still buy or sell in the market, put a note into your chat box today that you believe that you can actually sell in this market today. Put a one for yes, two for no. The other thing is that you also need to become the local market expert. When I say this, basically it's because if you're not the expert, then basically someone else comes in that knows more the market, normally will get the attention of the owner. And what I mean by local market expert is that you need to have uh, local market condition. It means you know what is happening in market. Today, I know most of the things that's happening in Subang Jaya and USJ because this is the market I'm actually focusing in. Hey, can you I also something, George, to... yes, yes. about the local market condition and local yeah. market, what's happening? Um, they are, I think a lot of times um, as agents, we, we may uh, overlook um, certain key indication or indicators. For example, you need to be clear uh, what kind of people are in the market right now in your location, what kind of, what's the demographics of your market? You need to go very detailed right now because I think uh, beginning uh, in a shift, everyone, the first emotion that is in any buyer or any seller is definitely fear. Agree with me if it's fear. Everyone is afraid of the unknown. The only way you can counter fear is when you are able to show facts. Now facts are basically number of units available, if you can, uh, what kind of people are buying into it? What kind of people are moving into this neighborhood? What business in that neighborhood is closing down and opening up? Because if you notice, businesses around the neighborhood are a very important indicator of how the market is going. So if you see many Starbucks coming up in that location, then you know likely what kind of level of consumer are coming into this place. Does that make sense so far? So I think as agents, you need to really, you know, when I was in selling in, as an agent, um, when I was really full-time in real estate, one of the things that I always do is to know, and I, because I also enjoy food. If you look at the way my body built is, food is part of my life. Um, I, I went so micro that I know what restaurants open, who are the restaurant owners, because those restaurant owners are likely going to be my customers if I go and see them. Um, what's going on, where's the best food in town, what supermarket open, what banks are open, uh, who are the bank managers there, but those are likely going to be your customers um, if you go. To, what, what, what is going on in your neighborhood? You've got to be as micro as you can to bring out that potential uh, information and expertise that you can offer to your customer. Because if you don't have that right now, guess what? Someone else will. And that's how you win market share. If you go in and you dig deep and you have that number to show them, by the way, these are the open offices that's open. These are the businesses that's opening right now. These are the opportunities that is coming in right now. And this is going to make your life a lot easier. Go as detailed as you can. Right? So these are some of the things that um, I, I want to kind of bring it out for so that the agents, when you're negotiating or when you're bringing in that pricing factor, you've got a lot of things in your belt to pull out and, and have that conversation. So that conversation now is no longer how I feel, what I think. It is based by facts. Let the numbers do the heavy lifting. Let the facts um, tell what's going on in the market. So I think these are one of the key things for agents to look at. Back to you, John. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, John. Uh, yeah, that's why it's important for you to know the local market condition. You must also know basically what properties are available in the market now. Those that are recently sold, pending, available, uh, which are the value buys, because most people are looking for properties that they, 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 they know that they cannot buy during the, uh, the, the, the seller market's time. You must also basically have inventories, and the in inventories are basically homes uh, for sale or for rental. And you need to network with agents uh, for inventories because uh, over the years, when I've built a lot of friends in this industry, and a lot of them actually on this line also. Basically, these are people that you work with to make sure they can service your clients. You must also learn to engage with buyers and sellers and get feedback constantly uh, so that you know what is happening in the market. And you must keep abreast with the media happening. What is actually happening in the market today is important because these are things that your sellers and your buyers are concerned and being careful so they can go in and address that for them. 
Now, before I move on to the next slide, now the Ganesh, the, based on this information, maybe I can get it online too. What are your thoughts on the, what, 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 what was just presented today? How do you basically go in and become a local market expert? Basically, well, the areas which I concentrate on, I, I'm pretty aware of who are selling what and all that. So when I get a listing down there, I, 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 when, I, when I do the inspection, I will be able to guide the owner uh, with, the, with the facts which are gathered over the time. And uh, using that, normally when I, when I get a lead and a listing appointment, what I will do is I will prepare for it by preparing the CMA, where I will get the latest prices, the actual uh, transactions, and then also the asking prices of all the agents that are doing, that are selling in that place. And most important of all, I will get three bankers to give me uh, indicative valuations. Using yeah. this, I will go in. Go in yeah, let's, uh, let me stop you a little bit, Ganesh, because I think later on you'll be going into to that in more detail. But in terms of the, I know that you're an expert in Taman Tun. Uh, the, now, the, uh, why, why is it that you are, people consider you as an expert there? Is it because you, are, you, know, you know a lot more than other agents or can you tell us a little bit more? No, uh, basically, I, I used to have, I run an agency in Kamantun. So I, I have a lot of referrals in that area. That's how I got my, my foothold in that place. And then I, I think I've done a little bit of branding in the sense that I get a lot of referrals. Hmm. Are there closings still happening in your area? Pardon? Are yes. there still closing or renting happening in your area? Yeah, in uh, my the latest uh, closing was a shop lot, which was uh, I got uh, about last year, late last year, and I I got it at a very when I got the listing and uh, the owner told me the price, uh, the uh, the price was so attractive because the owner realized the market was challenging. And then due to the facts we had given him, and he gave it to me at a price which go off very, very easily. I didn't even, we didn't even uh, advertise it. We just called up all the, uh, uh, from our database, with all the uh, potential investors. And within a week, we got a buyer and we negotiated and closed the deal. Wow. Wow, but when you say that the price is challenging, do you say do you mean that the price is uh, uh, more expensive than what uh, the what, what the valuation is or no 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 not what challenging the, the 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 most of the owners they were asking above five million in that lot. <laughs> so the shop lot is actually asking for about five million, and how much is the owner trying to get uh, sell their his shop lot? Oh, the, the owner after getting the facts from us. And after I told him that in this challenging market, it will take some time for, so to find a buyer, he priced it slightly below market and within, a, I will say within two weeks, we got a buyer. Uh, Ganesh, how many percent was it below that asking, the, the, the valuation? How many percent? 10 percent, 5 percent, do you remember? Uh, the, the, the going rate was 5 million. He, he, he priced it at 4.8. And did you guys close close to 4.8 or way below 4.8? 4.73. Ganesh, can I ask you a quick question? Do you inspect every single listing that you're going to sell? That's a good question because one of the questions, uh, when, we get a, when I get a uh, lead and then when I call the owner, the first thing, one of the first things we ask, the second thing is, can you list it? Without inspection, I normally counter it by say telling them without an inspection, I cannot recommend it to a to our client. And, and I always try to put them in the footsteps, in the shoes of a buyer. You know, how would you like it if you were to buy? Uh, if you, if I were to recommend you something which I've not inspected, so normally I. I will be very frank. I don't sell anything without inspection. Got it. So this is for the for the people that's watching today. Um, I know a lot of agents uh, 
that because I know a lot of agents call me because I own properties as well. They will send me a message. They will say, hey guys, uh, hey, uh, Mr. Owner, I have a, 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 a ready buyer that is back. You all know that is really 99% is not true, right? 99%, uh, nobody has a ready buyer. If everyone has a ready buyer, this training is to totally not going to work because all of us are doing very well. And the reality is we don't have ready buyer, but the reality is we are trying to get listing the easiest way, the fastest way. And by doing that, we miss out the opportunity to communicate with people and understand who is motivated and who is not motivated. So when Ganesh inspects properties, I don't think it's because he wants to look at the property alone. He wants to know who is the owner, why the owner is selling, and what can he add value to the owner. Does that make sense so far? Now, if you are in this shift market and you still go back to the old ways of calling and sending mass messaging and blasting out and all that, you cannot sustain in this market because you don't have the ability to find out the motivated sellers. And without motivated sellers, you will not lead you to motivated buyers. Does that make sense so far? So my, my, my advice for everyone, spend time building relationship with the owners, go and inspect the property, show them that you care because it's your job. You cannot sell something, and I agree with Ganesh, you cannot sell something if you have not seen it and you don't know what it is. I, 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 have, I have so many experiences when agents try to sell my property and they ask me questions like, where's the swimming pool? Inside my heart, I feel like slapping them. Thank God they're not an agent from my company. If they are an agent from my company, they will get a slap from me already. I, I will feel like, I, that's how irritated I will get if you don't know where the swimming pool is. For example, if you have not seen and do inspection, inspection is critically important in your day-to-day -day business. Right? Don't, don't have a one-size-fits-all for every listing that you take. Um, and there are sometimes owners are refusing to show units because many agents don't come prepared. Garnish come prepared with a CMA. I remember hearing a CMA, um, latest asking price from resources that you have. Basically, you go to the portals, you print out all the asking prices for the units that you have, and then you look at the past transaction record. You do a, basically a general CMA, and then you get a valuation from the bank. So you have basically three sources of information under your belt to go in and have an educated conversation with the client, an intelligent conversation. The word intelligent doesn't mean you're smart. It means you've got intelligence, you've got information to go in there with that conversation. Now, if you don't have that information to go in there with the conversation, the conversation suddenly becomes unintelligent. And a lot of times, it moves from unintelligence to emotional. And what happens, you are arguing with the owner, no, this must be this price, must be that price, it must be this price, it must be that price. And we get into that all the time. So I think um, it is an opportunity for you. Now, Shereen say not all sellers will let us inspect, especially high price, high range properties. Then my question to ask ourselves and to ask them, is that a motivated seller? And maybe why is he not letting us visit? Perhaps it's, you have to find out why. And some conversation could be a Zoom interview. Right now, with virtual, virtual, virtual Zoom coming into our lives, I believe this is a tool that we'll be using, um, it, it be using uh, for the rest of our journey in the real estate industry because it is so convenient. You know, Mr. Tan, can I see you for 10 minutes when at your comfort at your office via a Zoom call? So can I ask you five questions so that I know why you're selling and how can I best support you in your selling? Right? These are things that you can do. Um, it's a bad I this is it a bad idea to focus on motivated sellers regardless of whether it's in your focus area. Um, it's not a bad idea, but you've got to have an economic model that supports your business. If your economic model um, does is if whatever you are doing that is whether it's a motivated seller in a different area, but it is not part of an economic model, then I would say no. So for example, if your economic model is to sell 10 bungalows at 5 million ringgit, and you found a motivated seller that is wanting to sell at 300 over 1,000, I would think that 300 over 1,000 property, it's actually a distraction for your 10 bungalows that you want to sell. Does that make sense so far? So you've got to be really clear on what is your economic model. That's why the fundamental of the MREA, of the economic model, is so critical in the journey of a real estate agent. Okay, back to you, George. Go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for sharing, Ganesh. I'm sure you'll come back in uh, uh, soon. 
So the key is that you need to learn to become a local market expert. And uh, you have heard from Ganesh that basically it's important to know, have information so that when the sellers or the buyers talk to you, you are able to answer. Let's look at the next slide. I can move my next slide. Let me, my slide is not moving. Okay. Now we're going to move into a divided basis. Today's session is two portions. One is the listing consultation and then looking at right pricing. Now, normally, basically, one, when we go into a pricing, you just don't talk about pricing. There are basically four stages to go in. You know, I've been trained basically in this case, one, when it always starts with a phone call. So when a seller calls in, the time someone calls you and then you talk to a person. So from the phone call, basically, you set an appointment to actually go in. You know, and, 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 see the, and uh, see the place. Now, before you actually go in and inspect the place, you need to do some homework. That means you go in and do some preparation work to, to get your CMA and do all the checking. And after that one, you do the listing presentation. When you do a listing presentation with the, with the own, in this case, let's say seller, that's when the pricing issue will come up. Okay, it's not like you just throw a pricing and then talk about it. Normally, basically for us one, we go through a system that the pricing is discussed during a presentation with the owner. That owner gives you 20 minutes or 30 minutes to discuss basically your marketing plan and how you're going to present. So this listing consult consultation go through that process. So before I go into the pricing, I want to go in at least to understand the process. Uh, it's not just about straight talk about pricing, but there's a lot of things that have gone on that the seller understand before the pricing comes in. For example, here one, before you go in and even do anything, let's say the call comes in, you need to basically prepare yourself. That means you need to know the script, uh, you need to know the materials very well, you know, you need to go in to understand how to go in and present to the owner. You must also understand the market, uh, become the local expert, like, like John mentioned and Ganesh mentioned, you need to know the inventory, uh, how long the property is in the market, uh, what is the price of the property uh, per square feet wise, you know, what is the selling price, what is the landscape of the area, those things you need to know. And you need to understand that when you go in and then you meet the owner, the key is that you want to build rapport and trust with sellers and buyers. When you go in, it's not about you talking uh, the 90% the and owner listening 10%. You reverse that. That's why we have two ears and one mouth. Huh? That means you talk, you listen more than you actually talk. Active listening. You're listening basically to find out ex exactly what are the needs the seller has. So that when you go in and present, you can help him. So be a consultant, not just an agent. Huh? And one of the things that basically in a company, John always says is ask clarifying questions. You know, if you don't ask, basically you won't know. Uh, so again, it's prepare yourself this mentally that you are ready. That means you know the script, you know the material, you understand the market, you've done the CMA, you understand when you go in. It's about the seller, not about you. Understand the seller and basically his needs, not about you presenting. Uh, it's about basically helping the, the seller. And your goal is coming in to understand the seller and to ask clarifying questions. So the first thing is prepare yourself. Yes, hey, John? George, can I quickly do a role play with you right now here? <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, so George, you are now a seller that you are motivated but you don't want to tell me that you are a motivated seller now because this is this is the natural right everyone here this is the natural if you are in this business long enough you will know three main facts fact number one seller always want to sell high fact number two buyer always want to buy low fact number three agent always want to sell fast agree if you agree say yes this is standard every if you know the psychology behind it, it's the same. Every seller wants to sell high, uh, buyer wants to buy low, agent wants to sell fast. Now, George, pretend to be a motivated seller, but you are not ready to tell me that you are a motivated seller yet. And then I have okay. to work hard to earn the right to understand that you are a motivated seller. Is that okay? Yes, sir. George, Go ahead. Now let's work. Hey, George, um, uh, thank you for agreeing for this conversation and this meeting right now. Um, by the way, George, how has the impact of COVID-19 affected your work and your business? Uh, yeah, we're all in lockdown right now. So, but, uh, so at this point, one, the work is, uh, is, 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 is slow, but uh, we, are still, we are still communicating. So in my line of work, it's okay because mine is a, it's a banking industry. At this point, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's an established bank, so it's okay. Okay, so, so do, you, do you see that uh, COVID-19 has uh, uh, affected uh, the bottom line of your, your company and, 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 and do you think it's going to have some implication towards your career right now in terms of your job security and all that? How, how is that going? I'm just concerned because um, um, I think a lot of people are going through these challenging times and I, I was wondering how, how are you going through this right now? The, 
Oh, that's why I'm calling you because the uh, I'm thinking of having some extra buffer so that during this time one I can you know I can have extra money to to invest or to to do other things. You know? That's why I'm thinking about putting my property into the market. Okay. So so once you sell your property, what what are the what what would that opportunity? What would that you will probably be holding a, some a, some amount of cash or some amount of funds? What would that what how would it give you an opportunity? What opportunities is that you are looking at exploring with that kind of funds that you have? The well, the, I, I, I'm I'm not too sure yet, but like the, I I know that there are some good buys that you see the market one. So mm. when the funds are there, then I would then start looking for good properties. And, and when you are buying good properties, what's the intention and what's the purpose behind it? What's the end game for you to? To accumulate all these good buys right now, what, why? Why is what is basically motivating you? What's the big why behind this? Yeah, the yeah pr probably to be financially free. But but before I go in to buy properties, I think the real need is that I, I I need to have enough funds to pay for my kids' education. Got it. So how many kids do you have, by the way, George? Uh, I have three right now, and uh, they are they are schooling. How 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 what are the ages? Oh, they are the the the. One of them is uh, working, so that one is okay. But the other two basically is studying right now, so they are they are basically in university level right now. Got it. Got it. How many years do they have left in the university college right now? The, they just started, so probably another four or five years. Wow. Okay. Pause here. Pause here. Break script. Everyone, what do you learn? Right in the chat box. What do you learn in that conversation just now? Did I at any point in time talk about pricing his property? What was I trying to do? Anyone? Post it in the chat box. Clarifying is big why. Thank you very much. Connecting with the client, absolutely. Build rapport and find motivation, absolutely. Understanding his intention, absolutely. I was doing what we call a need analysis and a fact finding. Right? I'm fact finding to understand why. Now, the minute there are two things that will happen in the fact find. Number one, if you don't, if, and fact finding requires a lot of skill. The first skill that is required of the agent, this is a very important skill now, listen carefully. The first skill is to ask the question and shut up. Ask the question and shut this. Don't talk. Let him talk. 90% of the time, the customer must be talking. 10% you to ask questions. And if you are smart, write it down. Show them that you are interested because you are interested. If you are not interested, this process will not work. Right? That's important. Number two, the next thing is you are, you are writing down and trying to find the reason behind. Right? Everybody has some level of desperation in this season, in this shift. Right? But the best thing is not to bring out that desperation but bring out the motivation. There's a difference between desperation and motivation. We're trying to bring that motivation into the air. I was going through that positive present right now. I'm going through the positive. The negative present was like this. George, what are your struggles? Uh, let's go back to the script, George. What are your struggles right now um, in trying to uh, uh, sell this property? Yeah, the, no, because, you know, because you know that basically one, I'm not sure how long this particular thing will, will, will go. And then, like I say, banks one, they are also concerned about the business side. So I just want to have more buffer. And I also have mm -hmm. got commitments to pay, some properties to pay. So generally, I need a certain fund to make sure that I can tie over over the next couple of years. Got it. So, you, so, so what sort of time frame that you think that is necessary for you before it becomes a challenge for you that you need to sell this property? What time frame do you think in your well, mind that you have set to expect? Yeah, I'm not very urgent. I want to make sure I get the price that I want. So, so in, in a so help me understand what does it mean by not very urgent? Is it one month, two months, three months, one year, two years? So that I can better understand how can I support you in this journey of disposing this property? Yeah, I can, I can, I can probably go for maybe maybe three to six months. So, meaning that you need to have that um, uh, the proceeds of the cash of the sale within three to six months. Is that right? Uh, it will help lah, it will help. It will help you, awesome. Paul Script, now, did I find out when he needs the money right now? I didn't very explicitly ask, right, but I, I, I kind of dig deep enough to ask him that he actually needs it within three to six months. I was asking very clarifying questions. 
do you need the proceeds of the sale within three to six months? Is that what you mean? Is it, yes. Now, what's happening right now, I'm slowly building a conversation to show that I'm interested to help him. Now, here's how we go. George, let's resume. So, George, um, uh, in the next three to six months, what would happen if we cannot achieve a sale for your property? How would that look like for you? Mm, I will have to look at other other options with the with the bank la. or or maybe maybe I need to yeah because I cannot sell houses too many or cannot sell so uh so I'm not too sure maybe you can give some suggestion okay so basically you have no ideas in terms of if the next three to six months um your only under, your only thoughts are just to quickly dispose this particular property so that you have enough cash flow um to support other things that you want to do. But if you don't have that right now, you pr probably have no other options in your head right now. Uh, yeah, not, I haven't really thought that so far along that. I thought the, if I have properties to sell, that would be the best solution. So if we cannot get this done, how will it affect your family and your, your plans to make sure that there's stability in your children's education? How would that help you? Uh, how, would that, how, how, would that, how does it look like? No, I think it's important for the funds to come in uh, because the education cannot stop. So I just want to make sure the funds are there. Uh, it's important. Uh. So can I understand that the educate the stopping the education is a no is a not it's not an option. It's something that you Yeah, it's not it's not it's not an option. It's, it, uh, they want to be quite challenging to explain to the children. Uh. Yeah, so that's something that you don't want to lead them into that journey. Uh. Mm. Got it. So George, you know what? Hearing all these things with you right now, now if I come in and I devote my resources and time and effort to help you focus on quickly selling this property off with the right pricing strategy, would you enter into a, a relationship with me where it's exclusively for me so that I can devote all my resources to help you and I will present to you and I will be accountable to you in the next four weeks to eight weeks with a marketing plan. Would you consider entering that kind of relationship with me? Mm. I think it's possible uh, because I say that if you can help me get a, a, a sell my house on, I think we can look at that option. Okay, awesome. Joyce has a question here. You can only ask this question if you are very close to a seller. No, I have not met Josh for the not I'm just meeting him for the first time right now. You must come with the heart that you are interested to solve problems right now. If you got to change that mindset shift, the only way we can make more money than before and gain market share. You've got to put on the mindset that I'm here to solve problems for people that are in need. And you will get paid for that because that's the value that you're bringing. So Joyce, to answer your question, I am going to talk to everyone this manner. And some may not be ready for it. Some are not interested to talk about it. Then you just move away because that's difficult because that's a challenge. And Shift book talks about this. In Shift, let me quickly bring it up. In the first, in a, this is in page 137 of SHIFT. Um, um, uh, virtual, virtual assistant, please write this down. Page 137 of SHIFT, the window opportunity. Um, there's a quote here, in a buyer's market, sellers are often going through the five stages of grief. Five stages of grief. First stage, they are looking at denial. No, the market is not good. My property is very good. Sure, sell. That's the denial market. That's the denial part. Second part is anger. Why is this happening to me right now? Third is bargaining. Uh, let's see what I can get the best out of this. Fourth is depression. Then the fifth one is acceptance. Your job is to counsel them through this. The five stages of what an owner may feel. Some may feel faster going straight into acceptance. Some may not. Some may still be in a very in the anger stage. So there are five, five stages. I want you to read this particular chapter um, on page 137. Page 137, if you have got the book, that's the chapter to read, to work with the buyers. And, 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 it's, and, and, it's, and the way that I'm having conversation with George is not because it's something I'm learning today, it's because I've been doing this for many, many years. Today, the time I remember in 2008, 2009, during a minimum, minimum a, a, a small crisis that we had during the global financial crisis, that was the time that I sold the most property in my life. And there was a time I bought the most property in my life as well. Because I, I, I understood that if I am able to understand the needs of the client, 
and this is what you want to do, trying to understand that and have that conversation. Um, this is where you add value. I hope it helps you. Thank you for doing that role play with me, Josh. I thought okay, that thanks, was right. Sir. So back to you. Okay, thanks. Thanks for doing that. Uh, okay. okay, the first one is basically to prepare yourself. And then the, before you actually meet up with the seller, it's important, like we just talked about, basically you must, uh, you must have the CMA. You must have checked the pricing from the portals that's available. Uh, it, it can be iProperty, it can be the, the Property Guru, uh, Age, uh, Muda, different ones that basically will give you the information about what are the price range of the property that your seller is in. You must also check similar properties, listings, pricing in the neighborhood that, uh, that is close to where the, the property that you want to sell in so that at least you know within the area and within the, the neighborhood. Research on the neighborhood amenities and check few banks for valuation, not just one, a few. So at least you know that there's a that, that there's a, an average. Okay, there's probably more things to do, but at least these five things you need to do before you actually meet up with the owner. And then during the meeting itself, you create an impression. Uh, you, oh, let me just move my slide. We cannot see my slide. Uh, you create an impression, share your price recommendation, and then set expectations. So during meetings, certain things will happen. This is where the flow goes in, the in when you present it, you go through a listing presentation and when you go through that, that one, you actually uncover the seller's needs over their wants. Uh, like what John was doing, basically going through and asking me clarifying questions. You'll go through the home selling process, what is involved in the selling, uh, from the beginning point that you actually take the property until the point that actually you, uh, you sell a property, sign it, and then work through the process. So there's a process that sometimes the owner don't understand. As an agent, you must explain the process. You must also explain basically in our case, on three factors to get your home sold. Now, you must also talk about pricing to sell and wh what you recommend. And this is number five is where you, you will probably go in and talk about the pricing strategies and helping the owner understand the market condition. There's, you also go in and do a comparative properties to compare so the owner understand where his property is at compared to some of the other properties available within the area. Uh, and most likely, if the owner is interested, you'll, you'll have to de uh, deal with some objections based on pricing. And also, in this case, if you're getting exclusive owner, exclusive listings uh, objection. So any objection that will come, basically will, will need to be handled before they close. Because if you don't handle objections properly, then you're not able to close and help the owner uh, market their properties there. Huh? Now, before I go into the pricing side, this is where Ganesh, I need to come back in to look at basically now. The, I know that basically, Ganesh, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, the, now the... Uh, the guy just make sure your mic is closer a little bit because just now when you talk it was a bit soft huh? so hopefully now it's okay okay now the uh, normally when you meet up with the seller to do a presentation maybe you can walk us through the process because you're talking with us just now about doing some things before the owner and then the pricing maybe you can walk us through how you will do a presentation for the owner and, and the stages that you'll go through yeah, before I go for the appointment I, I will do my homework that prepared the CMA and the asking actual and uh, I will also get the bank uh, valuations. Yeah? You can get Garnish slightly bigger on the smaller main screen. Spotlight him, please. So uh, on the day of the appointment, I will I will go there earlier, survey the area so that I will get a better idea of the work all the amenities and uh, what and there are certain things which i will take note of especially if there are like uh, transmission lines tnb stations because these are factors which many buyers will take into account huh? and then uh, once i meet up with the owner i will introduce myself and my team and then i will ask him to give me a, a tour of the house we will while he is talking, he will give, give me a history of what he has done, uh, the extensions, the renovations which have been taken, done over the years. I will note down all this, and then I will also note down the condition of the house, especially where there are uh, repairs to be done. During this, uh, this is where also I build, I will build up a relationship with uh, most of. Uh, with the family, and then after the 12th, I will ask for permission to do the listing presentation. Once I'm inside, 
uh, once I ask, uh, once I get the permission, and then we I will sit down with him and explain to him the sale process, and then also I will uh, go through the pricing strategy uh, using the CMAs and the bank valuations. And at this stage, I will also explain to him the need for staging and repairs to be done. And then we will talk about this. And here is where I will get a lot of objections. One of the objections is uh, why uh, not the, they, they will normally object to the repairs and uh, staging because they say when most people buy, they will, they will renovate themselves. So there's no purpose in doing this. And I have to overcome this by explaining to them that the, the impression people get when they, when they make an offer will take into account all the repairs to be done. So it will be difficult if I don't. So once we do this, uh, once we agree whether we are going to do the repairs and the, the, the staging, then I will just to just to check on the repair and the staging side. So just staging, you're referring to uh, making sure the house is in the best presentation to actually go in and show yeah. buyers. But in the repair side, one uh, is there an estimate cost? Because for a link house and a bungalow, maybe the owner might not be particular about pricing. Is it a heavy cost for repair? Yeah, especially for a bungalow, there are times when they, uh, especially when there's leakages in the bathrooms and all that, they say we are selling as is where is basis. Uh, normally, I, I would have. Uh, normally, I would take, uh, get an estimate from the contractor and I explain to him this was the cost. And if he's, uh, if he doesn't want to do it, then I will, I will ask him to maybe give a discount on the price. But we will take all this into account, and then I will recommend him a price. And if they do not agree, and if the, if if he still insists on a price which is higher, as long as it's within 10% of my recommended price, I will take it. But we will have an agreement that in the next 30 days, we will, I will do the marketing, I will give him the response, including the comments, then we will adjust the price. Hey Ganesh, can I ask in your general uh day-to-day -day conversation with owners like this, your objective is to secure exclusive, am I right? I will not, uh, more, I, I have never taken a listing without an exclusive. You, so let me, let me repeat, you have never taken, taken an, a listing without exclusive? Yes, uh, except one instance last year, that was okay. not, uh, I did uh, I did the listing presentation. I explained to him what we are going to do, but before he no, I wanted to go back and talk to my lawyer, and then he came back and said, "No, uh, my lawyer recommended that I don't get it." But what he told me was his uh, he told me that he is thinking of selling it at four point eight million. Immediately, I knew. That was a good price. He also explained that he will only engage another uh, agent. What happened is that agent marked up the price a bit so that he negotiated it out. But I put it out at the exact price which he wanted because since I didn't have an exclusive, I just went straight ahead at the price he wanted. And uh, immediately I got a response. And this buyer, I believe, had also contacted the other agent. That agent recommend, uh, had uh, priced it higher than what I had priced it. Now, I did this because I did not have exclusive, because I had no protection. If I had that, I, was, I would be able to negotiate at a higher price. So, so basically, almost 95% or 99% of most listings in your career has been exclusive. In the last seven, eight years. Ah, uh, okay. And you're in this business for how many years, uh, 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 Ganesh? And I know you just started at the age of 10, so we know your age, your, we know your age right now. So you started real estate at the age of 10, but I know, I know that. Um, so how many years have you been doing real estate right now? Uh, 28, 29. 
20, 29 years, 28 years. So guys, listen to this. This is good stuff here. And I know that the technical stuff in terms of the sound is, is, is a bit challenging, but I, I, I'm just trying, we are trying our best to bring you the best opportunity to hear from the best that we can offer in terms of content and experience. Um, we are hearing from a very experienced agent um, who understand how to work with owners. Um, and it is imperative that that becomes a role model for your business. You need to find role models like this that is able to help you develop um, that perspective to help you work with owners. And his intention is to solve problems, help the owner sell. Because if that, and, and he's getting into finding motivated sellers um, all his life, whether it's a bad market or in a good market, it, it is always his intention because he knows if he can find motivated sellers enough, he will get motivated buyers. In any market, I think it works across market. But I think even more right now, um, he is now having even more potential opportunity. I believe he has more opportunity to talk to people right now. I think he's more excited right now than before because there are more owners that are willing to say, hey, Ganesh, I am more willing to listen to you because there is a problem going on in the market. Am I correct to say that, Ganesh? That's true. Actually, uh, I've gone through a few downturns and I've always told my team members, in a downturn, this is the time for opportunity because many owners are looking for good agents to market. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's where you win market share because when there are so many agents during those um, seller's market, anybody lists a property, they kind of like sell, right? But right now, the agents with the skill set that is, and also the intention to solve the problem for the owners wins, right? So be, be, make sure that you are on the winning side when you are really trying to support the owners to sell their property. Back to you, George. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Ganis and John, uh, to share that one. Now, because of time-wise, uh, I also want to make sure that we go into the pricing strategy. But at least in, uh, what you have seen is that it's important that basically you become a local expert and you must understand the process that goes through that before you talk about pricing, you have to go in and understand how to do a listing presentation. Now, some of you might not know how to do that. And basically, for those that actually wants to, you know, let's say, for example, if we conduct a, a session on teaching people how to do a listing presentation, if you are interested to actually join that one, just put a yes. Give us an idea what you need. At the same time, if you have questions that's related to pricing that you want us to answer, maybe you can start putting into the chat box also so that the, we, can, we can go in and look at those questions maybe towards the end. Huh? So let's move on to the right pricing. Okay, right pricing now. <clears throat> now I'm going to go through a, a, a couple of strategies and the principle which is important because I say if you know these particular strategies, then you can actually help the under, owner understand where the market is going. The first basically, the, the strategy you need to look at is basically what we call the law of supply and demand. When pricing their home, seller need to obey this law. It's a law. It's like a law of gravity. Huh? If you try to... to to jump out from a building and hope that basically you not fall. Law of gravity says that if you jump, jump off a building, you will fall. It's just a law. And over here, the market cycles are like a seesaw. It's the balance between the number of buyers on one side and the number of sellers on the other side. So if you look at the one on the, the, the chart on the, on the left side, it says the buyer's market. Fewer buyers goes up, more inventory. It means basically more properties in the, in the market uh, it goes down. That means basically, if the inventory is, uh, if the inventory is, a, is if the few, if the buyers are few and inventory is a lot, prices will go down. That's a buyer's market. The seller's market basically, if the inventory is less and there are more buyers, that's why the price can go up. So today, are we in the buyer's market or in the seller's market? And you all will know basically we are in the buyer's market. Few buyers but more listings or more inventory. Huh? So more sellers drives the prices down, more buyers will drive the prices up. Huh? So that's why the pricing is a, something that we need to think through. There's also a, a, an objection that I want to just uh, tell you because when, when Garnish goes in and explains, 
because he has, he, he, you know, he just doesn't go into the, the appointment uh, hoping to say whatever comes up. He has been rehearsing them. So this one, one way that you need to look at it, when you want to be good at something or move to a cell mastery, you need to learn to handle objection. Now, this objection is, <coughs> what, what the seller is saying, we were hoping to get a higher price for our home. For example, this, this is the objection. And a possible script that you can use is to use the law of supply and demand. Do you understand the law of supply and demand? When supply is up and demand is, is, is down, which way do prices go? What supply do we have now? Right, that's why prices have gone down. It's a law, it's not an ideal. Do not define the law of gravity. We cannot define this law either. So let's price it right and get your property sold. So if the owner say, I want, I want to get a higher price, this could be a script that you use to help the owner understand that uh, if he price too high, basically his properties will not be able to sell very fast. Okay, so these are, there are a lot of objections like that that you might have. Write that down and then see whether you can deal with that. Huh? But there's always a script that you can actually memorize and learn so that you can deal with those objections. When you, when you want to get the price right one, this one is, uh, this chart is a very important chart because the, this one is a tale of, uh, a tale of two markets. Whenever you go in and, uh, now, now, now John, I think you're also quite good in this chart. You want to explain this chart? I think you would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice way of throwing the ball back to me. Fantastic. There you go. There. We, we also learned Tai Chi also in our training. Very good. Um, I think, I think this chart is a, a, a perspective um, that in, a, in any shift, right? And you notice the combination is 33%, 67%, 100%. 100%. 100%. means what it's trying to say that in a shifted market, there are 33% of property owners who are willing to be in the market. Or 33% of the products are in willing to be in the market. And this is also in concurrent with this law called the law of diffusion of innovation that 33% of people will adopt new things or will change to new things, right? So, so very importantly that when you bring out this, this particular chart to an owner, and I, I will tell this owner, guys, by the way, um, majority of people today wanting to price their property above the current situation right now. And there are only so few that are willing to do it. So if I if I if I if I can imagine how Ganesh goes into the owners. By the way, Mr. Owner, there are five transactions in the past six months, and this is the average price. If I put all the pricing with the same similarities, I do a comparison method, and I price that. For assuming the property is five million, and there are five transactions, um, averagely it's transacted about four point seven million. I, I can imagine that's happening right now. And the market value or the bank valuation is right now 5 million. And right now in the market, there is a, approximately about 7 units available for sale from what I can see on the advertisement. Now, this one you have to thank a lot of agents because sometimes this is where the agents help you because other agents, right, in the market, they like to put up a lot of this thing that's not a real one, right? So this, are, this is where it helps you. The, the inventory that I can see right now uh, from I, I, our, our screenshot, um, my, my, the uh, property guru or property, I property is listing. This is where the inventory is right now. Um, and we have about seven to eight of them selling, uh, trying to sell about 4.7, 4.8. Now, if you need to sell the next three to six months, you've got to price ahead of the market so that you, your unit gets the attention first. Number one, your units get attention first. Number two, you will increase the amount of viewings because you are priced competitively. I imagine that's what, what some of the conversations that Ganesh will be having with the owner. I imagine he's nodding his head right now. It's very simple. So now if you want to be in that 33% of the price to bargain because we now establish your why, why are you interested to sell, why this is important for you, then now let's look at working towards getting into that 33%. Does that make sense so far? Good. Now, thanks, uh, John, for sharing that one. Let me just add also, now, this chart itself, one, the, you can see one pricing and condition. The one basically on the line one is below and above price versus other, uh, other properties and condition. So for a property to be, be sold, you need to, know, you need to know what property will sell. So the properties with uh, right pricing and good condition will sell. And the properties need to be in the market, the orange box. So once it's in the market, you know that this property is actually going to be sold. 
this basically yeah. on, on a note on the side, it says that 80% of homes are overpriced, 20% are well priced. And this yeah. person is saying that basically for those homes that are 80% overpriced, no offer. Those that are Correct. 20% are well priced, multiple offers. So when you yeah. price a property, you must make sure that your property is in the market. Okay? Now, when you say out of the market, that means basically it's really overpriced. The no man's land, John, the what is the no man's land? But meaning meaning that, that guy is neither here nor there. So, for example, uh, I'll give you an example. I think George brought out an example about how a owner was renovating halfway. Just now, right? The, 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 yes. the corner lot or whatever, right? I have a similar experience. In 2009, um, I was looking for a bigger home. I was looking for a four-bedroom apartment. Um, and there was this particular house uh, in Monkara. It was a 3,000 square feet with two car parks, uh, it's a duplex unit. Um, and the owner was looking at 1.1, 1.2. Market value was 1.4, so about 200,000 below, about 15, 16% below market, not a bad deal. But when I went into the house, it was half cooked. What I mean is half cooked. Uh. Half cooked meaning uh, you can see aircon piping, but you cannot see aircon. You can see kitchen cabinet, but you cannot see the top. You can see the walls, all the partition all redone, but there's no painting on some part of the wall. Some walls got painting, some no, no painting. So it's neither here nor there, but it was a good value market property. No man land, two years cannot sell. Two years cannot sell. And that's an example of no man land. So I went in, I made an offer, I bought it at 900, 920,000, I think. What is 1.4 million, I bought it at 920,000. I am a motivated buyer. Wow. <laughs> if you can find me a motivated seller, you might get me as a So, so uh, but this all you, all 400 of you, don't call me after this call, okay? Uh, I, I got limited funds. So, so yeah, don't, don't call me just because you got a motivated seller. But that's how it is when you bought property, when I buy property, I actually motivate as a seller, the agent was no agent, number one, no agent was interested to help the owner because when they saw and in no, no man's land, one of the problem is you can bring out to the, the to the owner. I would think that one of the number one challenge is getting an agent to work with you because your property is in the no man's land. Right. Because so why? It's because not, uh, yeah. yeah, it's not that I'm not motivated, but I am not in realization that my property actually cannot sell if I don't make adjustment. Right. The good point I mentioned that John because it's a. If the property itself is, uh, it, there's no viewing, there's no activity, uh, no agents bring anyone there, maybe the price, price of the property for the owner is actually in a no man's land. It means neither here nor there. It's not too yeah. high, it's not too low, it's just that no one is interested to look at it. So after two years, what will happen to the owner, depending on his condition, he will go through what we call, yeah, he's in stage four in depression and acceptance, and I was the only offer that came in to him after two years. He told me that very openly. And that was my opportunity. Right, so, so one of your opportunities right now, if you are smart, go and look for owners who been trying to sell for one year and two years. I wonder, are they already in, already in the desperation or depression right now that you can get them out of it right now? Yeah, right? and, and uh, realize that you are a consultant, means you are going there to help them solve a problem. You are not Absolutely. there to take advantage of them. It's a way that they need help. So most agents to run away, but for you is that you must go in and help the under owner understand how their property yeah. is priced. Now, most of our yeah. properties, are, thanks, John, uh, we'll come back yeah. to you a bit, a bit later, but over here, the next, next, next one here, this one basically is uh, what a seller market will look like. Again, it's price and condition is important, but in a seller's market, a lot of properties are in the market. That's why you see that the orange box is very big. Those outside the market one is less. So in a seller's market, basically, almost any property can sell. That's why for agents, one their skills are not, uh, you know, they don't use their use their skills don't show up in a seller's market so much. But in a buyer's market like this, where the properties, are, you know, limited, it means most of our properties are actually out of the market pricing. You need to get the owners to price it correctly so you help them sell. Okay, and the other thing to note is that the market does not determine the price of the property. You must have the owner know. Basically, the value of the house is not how much he wants to sell or how much how much the agents want to make. The market determines the price of the property. That's why it's always important to get a few bank valuation because that's where the owner knows that actually it's a fair market value. The question is, from the fair market value, how low do you need to go? Uh, because that is where you can guide it. So we are, we are, you know, we are, we are being objective, you know. Again, it's John always says basically let the facts and figures do the heavy lifting. 
present yeah. the facts to the owner and let the owner decide. Huh? So hopefully you're learning something that uh, this chart itself explains a lot to the owner without saying anything much. Pricing is important, condition is important, and so forth. Huh? Yes, John? Hey, George, I want to quickly take one minute here because I think Paul Im has a, has a question, which is a very good question. How to convince a seller to sell low if it's below on a no profit for the property, especially property? So the goal is not to convince them to sell below for a profit. The goal is to ask them, what does it, why are you selling? And what if you don't sell, what happens to you? You leave that decision to them. Because we all know right now, today, it's either we cut our losses, just like in stock market today. Uh, there's a Chinese saying called Si Si Dong Yang. There is this, this mindset that we need to have. In order for us to lose a little bit, it's actually a big win for us. Maybe it released my pressure for loan. Maybe it released my decrease for me to look at other opportunities right now. So that is the, that is the mindset that we have to have by throwing the decision back to the owners. And I know you're going to lose money, but you tell me, is selling this property more important or losing money more important? You make a decision on it. It's your call. Well, yeah, I, hope that answer your question. I hope that answered your question. I thought that's very important. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Huh? Now, the other one, basically, the move on is the... Now, Ganesh, anytime you're going to jump in, feel free. Huh? Now, the, the, now, this second one, basically, is don't miss the window of opportunity. And what that means is that there, there's only a window, basically, for the, for the property to be highlighted and getting the best value. The first time someone sees a property, that is what we call a window of opportunity. That is the best time for the, for the agent to sell, a, to, to, to sell a house or the owner. Now, that chart basically, uh, activity level versus the uh, weeks on the market. One, two, three, four. Once it reaches the four week, that's one, the activity level is the highest. That means most people are interested to view the property within the first month. You know, after that one, basically, when it goes through, then it begins to actually go down. So you must help the owner understand the reason why you must price it correctly is because this is the best opportunity to go in and sell a property. Because if you don't do that, later if you keep reducing the price and we'll show some charts later, that is where you are going in to chase after the market. Now, Ganesh, you have any thought to share on this one here, whether this is true for you that most of your property is priced correctly, is so within this window of opportunity? Yeah. Uh, yes, George. Uh, I always tell them that the, the, the interest is most within the first 30 days, if they lose that opportunity, it's going to be difficult to, uh, because one of, one of the questions many people ask me when the, uh, the property is in the market for so long is, why is it there? What's wrong with it? And that's something which I, I try to avoid having. And that's why when, when there are times when some of the properties I've been marketing and then sold, have been in the market for more than a year. What we do is we withdraw it after a few months. We withdraw it from the market and put it back again with a new price. So that's my strategy. Okay, uh, uh, good. I know that because there's always a window of opportunity there. Uh, so let's look on at the, the, another strategy that we can look at and to consider. Now, this is the one that basically John just mentioned that if you're not taking notes on this, uh, this is the slide you need to take go through because you're a consultant. So in the buyer's market, sellers are often going through the five stages of grief. One is denial, then it goes to anger, bargaining, depression, and then it goes into acceptance. So my job is to counsel them through the process. So it's important because it is a process to go through. The owner just don't drop the price immediately. Uh, mm -hmm. It might start high, but as you go through a process, they will actually reduce the price. In yeah. fact, basically the uh, the today one, if you have a buyers that are looking for properties, uh, you know, in the in the in the clan, I've got one in actually Banna Putri clan, it's in Kurongsan <laughs> 10. Now, this property basically one, the it was priced at actually close to the when I check the bank valuation, this property is a 2275 house, a corner house. The bank valuation came in at 720 uh, to 790. The lowest valuation for a bank is 720. The highest from the bank, a few banks, is basically 790, which means that I was trying to sell above 790 because that's what owner wants. Owner wanted me to sell at close to 820. This was close about a year ago. So basically, when you put a price at the, the 820 one, there was very, initially the, there was some response, but the, the price was too high. So we talked with the owner and reduced the price down to 780 and 770. And then there was still no takers. Now the owner basically, after six months, becomes more urgent. And now it's about one year, the owner needs to sell it. So we have gone in to move the price down to actually 720 already. So mm. 720 for a, a house in 
Krongsang uh, 10 gated uh, market valuation basically one is you know right at the lowest end and right now we have convinced the owner not to to price it ahead of the market we are going at 700 so if you want to upgrade your house in, in a basic house there is easily 600 650 by paying a little bit more you can upgrade to a corner uh, in the Banaputri gated area very easy access to the, the highway give me a call uh, because I also want to go in and sell the property okay so because the bias goes straight now, I, I realize the bias goes through that. So I'm going to counsel and say that this is the best way to sell the property. This is what yeah. you need to go through with some of your, your, your sellers. Because there's a relationship with the owner. Yeah. I've, I've basically rented the owner's property. I've sold the owner's property before. So there's a friendship being built that we can go in and do that. Yeah. Uh, I don't go in and just do that with any owners, but I can counsel them through the process. Hey, George. So some, yeah. some, can I, is it correct to say that some, some owners uh, work through these four stages faster than some? Some takes longer time, especially those who has a lot of uh, emotional attachment to those property. For example, I grew up in this house. My father gave this to me. Blah 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 blah. So it really, it really um, depends on that individual. But you don't stop that. Sometimes that journey is like if you, if you hear what George said. The past six months, he has brought that pricing down. Some people require longer time. Some people require shorter time. Right, so there is no right one one fit all size formula, but the goal is I believe George has been following up with this owner as as much as he can in this whole journey. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. So the follow up is the is the key factor here to bring them down here. Now, perhaps if this property was in the market at this moment in COVID nineteen, I believe the process is faster. That's correct. Yeah. Because the so reality that, comes, I don't have time to go into depression so much because I need to pay my bills, I need to settle my stuff and all that right now, right? So, so it really depends, right? Yeah, cool. definitely that's great because I said uh, six months ago, one, the owner was not willing to readjust the pricing because we we're hoping for the best. In fact, if you have sold a property uh, earlier six months, we had an offer at 750 that owner rejected. So, mm -hmm. so again, it's like these are where the owner understand that the, what we work, work through this with the owner. And, and, and George, this is, this is a good story to share with your next owner about how that owner now <laughs> is facing the market. Am I right to say that? Yes, it's a good correct. Story. Yeah. What, what, that, that this is an example of how owners are now chasing the market because they didn't price it right in the beginning. Right. Go ahead, George. Okay. Uh, thanks, sir. The other thing that you need to look at is also look at the, the, the pricing itself must reflect the market movement. Marketability and sellability of the seller's house are determined by two factors. One is the market direction. You need to know whether the owner must or the seller must know whether the market is appreciating or depreciating, rising or selling. Because some owners might not know what is you know, seller's market or buyer's market. They just want to sell their house. So you must have to understand that the, 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 the direction is, is it going upwards or is it going downwards? Uh, the market speed of change, how quickly the prices are changing and at what rate. Because if the pricing is changing very, very slow, then basically the owner need to also respond to that. So the price must, be, he must know the market movements. Only the agents can help him. Local agents that monitor the pricing and the trends can guide the owner. Uh, Mr. Owner, the, the houses in the area one, two have transacted by this price. So it's important to guide the owner in this, this particular conversation. Let me share a couple of slides and then we'll jump in to have some questions there. The fourth one is don't chase the market price ahead. Now, in this tactic one, this is really the header. Don't chase the market price ahead. Now, what we mean by that is whether the market is going up or down, you want to price your listings ahead of the market. Ahead of it on the way up and ahead of it on the way down. So right now, it's about, so we know that the pricing is on the way down, not on the way up. You are in a race against time. The best price you'll get is the one you get now. If you wait, it will be low. It's important for you to realize that because when, when the seller rejects an offer, that might be the highest offer that he gets. You know, so you need to also go in and, and, and caution the owner on that one. These other two charts to actually explain. Now, the, what exactly is uh, the, the... This one is the... Hold on. This one is a seller's market. In the seller's market one, the note on the right side says this. Pricing market, seller thinks time on their side may price above current market and hope market will catch up and bring them to price, bring, bring them to price, they, bring them to the price that they want, provided the market continue to rise. Now this one here, one, <coughs> uh, in I've experienced actually the last, even last year itself, actually the last six, the last six months, one owner basically have a property in USJ, 
Now in USJ, uh, in the area one, the one house story property one, a basic property is priced about maybe 600 to 650 range. Uh, 650 range, the, uh, but for a renovated unit, normally the price is about 700. The owner wanted to, to price at the uh, 800 range, eventually it went down to 780. So when I did a presentation for the owner, I told the owner the price he wanted was a bit high side. He should price it at 780 because the market uh, condition is such that basically, you know, he can maybe get only close to about 700 range. The renovation he put in was about close to 150,000. The owner was hoping to recover the renovation cost he put in over the last five years. So basically, because at that point one, the, the house condition is good. Owner, we put in a price in, but eventually this house was sold for 785. Okay, now it took some time. The price went down, but the owner was still able to get the price that they want by looking at the, 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 the timing. Now today, for example, if the owner wants to sell at a high price, you must tell them basically, is the pricing going up? Uh, what is the condition for the house? If the house condition is okay, maybe he can get a higher price. So, but the owner also decided he cannot get a full 150. He was willing to accept maybe half the renovation cost he can recover. So, he walked through owner one in the rising seller's market. Generally, sometimes the owner can get the price that he, what, that he wants by waiting. Okay, wait long enough, the market will catch up. Okay, so in the, that is basically the scenario. 10 years back, you know, owner is saying that if I price the property, if I wait long enough, I will get the price that you want. So, I think a lot of agents in line with you will realize that. Nah? So, if the owner wants, What's the high price? If the agent is not interested, you'll just find another agent. That is, a, that is a rising market appreciating. But that is not a market that we're in today. We're in this market right now, there's basically a declining market or a, a, a bias market. Now, this chart is also quite interesting. The, you're looking basically at the average home price, the whole market price will drop. So what the owner is doing is the owner is trying to catch the pricing. Each time you go to the owner, the, the, the price drop a little bit, drop a little bit, drop a little bit, but it's always chasing the, the, the market. The market price is always lower than the price that the owner is willing to, to do that. So how you can help the owner price it ahead of the market is to go in and understand. And this is what I did with one of the house that just sold maybe about just before the, the lockdown. The owner wanted to sell a, the, a one of three house for was close to about 670 and the owner was willing to accept 650 and 630. The lowest transaction in the area was 620. We actually go in and ask the owner to price it ahead of the market and go in and sell at 600. And we got an offer at 600. Uh, because the owner was willing to listen. Before that, we were always going in and chasing the market. Then we decided to help the owner understand even sell it after six months, price it ahead of the market so that you can get it rather than waiting for the price to catch up, price it ahead. I think this is one strategy that we need to go in and start using to actually advise the owner because we can understand the trends, okay? Now, I've gone in to look at most of my slides already, except the last one, but the, any, any, any thoughts that you have right now? Because I want to pause here. It's very important to understand what is rising market, falling market, uh, how to price it correctly. Maybe any question, and, and Ganesh or John can jump in right now. Before yeah. basically we close the, I think I think there was a question. Uh, there was a question earlier from. Uh, let me just try to go back to the. Um, there you go. There's a question from K. Stan. Some sellers will go talk to a few agents to get a feel of the market price with the intention to get free quotation. How to handle this type of sellers? This is the best seller to work for. I repeat, this is the best seller to work for. Why? Because if they can, and I guarantee you, eighty to ninety percent of the agents won't be working the way George and Ganesh is working. Agree with me right now. Everybody is just going to do very little homework, most of the agents out there, and people like George and Ganesh are going there prepared. In order for you to distinguish yourself, you must be in a place where they can compare what is a good agent and what is a not-so-good agent. That's the opportunity to showcase yourself. I love competition. Competition is necessary. Number one, it brings that, that, uh, that focus of me wanting to be the best and that's where I can set myself apart from the rest of my competition. Now, if the other competition comes in with very minimum information, with no facts, this is where I come in with all the facts and a listing presentation and I go through a, a needs analysis with them. I can rest assured a lot of agents today will not go through any list analysis. They won't because they don't know how to. They are still trying to sell. They are still thinking before shift. 
Now, all of you here, the all 400 people of you here are now working on a shift. So you should be thinking and you should be the one that's bringing this way or this method of consultation with the clients because a lot of them try to bring them from a positive present straight away to a positive future. Does that make sense? So this is an absolute opportunity for you. Um, is there any other questions that everyone has? Yeah, but the, the script, Mike, the, all this information is found in the, the tactic book. So like, for example, we are talking about getting the, the changing the market on page 147 in the shift book. It goes into a lot more detail to explain what it means basically by chasing the market. So if you can get a hold of book one, it does a lot more explanation than what I just did also. Yeah, someone mentioned about, I, I like uh, Michael's, this uh, Michael JD's uh, ahas, that the serious reality is to challenge is because bank value, bank, bankers are giving ridiculous value. You're, you're absolutely right. Bank valuation is only one component of that comparison. It's only one factor. And that factor shouldn't be the only factor um, when we have the conversation with, clients so the the, the 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 inventory available in the market um, is important the past transaction is important and the current value is important as well so i think these are the three things that gunners have shared that is re relevant common as a question how do we manage sellers we have taken an exclusive listing price it well and still fail to sell it within after six months Ganesh, you want to answer that question it's a good question here i went through this experience recently in banda Utama. i got a listing for for a corner at 2.2 .2 million. It had been marketed by three or four other agents earlier. When I took the listing, I told her that I'm going to do a market, I'm going to do a, a get the bank valuations and including I will do my own research. After doing it, I came back and recommended at 2 million. She was taken back because even the bank valuations were as high as 2.2 .2 to 2.3 million. But what I told her was that basically her house, she had certain, the house had certain features which was going against it. It, it, it is something very strange in the sense that they had a guard house right in front, which was disrupting the flow of the traffic. So a lot of people were not not happy to have the, the you know the fact that uh, they cannot enter the house properly so when on paper it was easy 2.2 .2 million was easily saleable but when when i actually inspected it i saw that it had this uh, this uh, disruption of flow of traffic and i i told her that a lot of people are going to be against uh, uh, buying it so she accepted mine and I thought it was going to be an easy sale, but it took me six months after throwing flyers and incurring a lot of in, uh, advertisement and all that. And then later on, I realized that there were a lot of people that were against the house because it was facing west. And number two, her extensions were done without approvals. So after six months, we decided to come down to 1.95. And that's when the uh, the offers started coming, and it was finally closed at one point. What I'm trying. To say, uh, Sorry, I, I miss you, the Ganesh. Close, close at what price, price Ganesh? What price? Close at what price? Five. One point five. Eight five. One point eight five. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So basically, the, you know, the valuations and even the past transactions supported the earlier, uh, the, the, the earlier pricing of 2.2 million. But, uh, but because it had certain peculiarities in the sense that there was a guardhouse, which she felt was giving her security. But a lot of people thought that their privacy would be intruded, the flow of the traffic. That was the purpose. There was a lot of wanting to buy the corner house because they had 20 feet of land, they had two young children, and they were willing to take that. But they wanted it at the price which they felt was fair. Got it. So basically, to answer Carmen's question, it's really the journey of um, kind of like twitching it, working around it, trying to figure out. Because there are certain things 
you wouldn't figure out until the viewing happens from other buyers to know, hey, that's a problem here. The door is the wrong wrong angle. The gate cannot open fully. Um, the west, west side of the sun on this corner of the house really affects the way I feel about the house. So all these things can only happen when you bring in the viewings, right? And I, and I, and I think every viewing you do, you probably stay in contact with the owners very closely. John, in this uh, case, normally I give a marketing report, uh, a monthly marketing report, stating all my activities together with the response. In this case, every viewing, after every viewing, I will get back from the buyers and I will actually copy whatever comments they make and give it back to the owner. So the owner, this house really paid. So actually, she was not desperate to sell the house, but because she was going to be alone and her, her husband had passed on and that she had only one child who was living away, she thought the house was too big for her to make it. So she, wow. yeah. So, but in this case, I, every, after every viewing, I will get feedback. I will push the guy to, to give me the feedback in, uh, in uh, WhatsApp, and then I will copy it and send it to her. Getting a great feedback, and she knew the resistance. Wow! So this is really you are not even you are not talking to her based on your own feeling. You are giving her evidence of what's happening, guys. There's one thing I want to share with everyone here. If you have not learned anything in this training session, remember this: evidence come before emotions. If you are professional in your work, show up with the evidence. What you heard Ganesh did just now, he was doing constant diagnosis of what's going on in that property. I mean, basically, he's behaving like a doctor. If, if, there, is, if there is a title in a real estate agent's uh, 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 genre of how to diagnose property, I would award this title to Ganesh because he will call him Dr. Ganesh. Dr. Ganesh, that's a nice, 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 nice title. Yeah, that's a nice name. We should use that one, Dr. Ganesh. We should go uh, Tuesdays with Dr. Ganesh. We have a training with you on that. <laughs> so, so that's 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 really something that that I think is important. Now, there are a lot of questions coming in. Um, virtual, virtual support. I need you to help me uh, highlight and read out to us so that we are not missing out some of these questions. Uh, John, there is one earlier from May. He said, "For seller, they are investor. Do not sell when there is a profit. Do we tell them to hold?" So the question is, you must go through the need analysis with them. Ask them, is selling the property more important or having profit more important? It's their decision. If you know that, oh, no, I'm okay. I, I just need to make this profit. I'm okay. I don't need to sell. Yes, then maybe your advice should be, maybe don't sell. Put it out in the market first so that it comes back in. Well, there's a strategy, right? If you, if you feel, view it for the first time, it's also a strategy. So put that, market, that property out of the market. But you've got to be very clear and very, really understand whether selling is more important or profit is more important for the client. It's very important. If you, if, if you have not established that, I wouldn't go into the prescription mode yet until I know the facts. Yes, what's the next question? From Elaine, how do we reduce seller price lower than the previous rejected buyer's offer? As example, asking 590, offer came in 550, which owner rejected? Now I think 550 is also going to be tough based on the transaction price, 550. It's a fair price, but few call, few will win. So, so maybe Josh should take that question. It's very similar to your client question right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the one thing that we need to realize is basically the pricing itself is not uh, up to agents or the owners, it's really the market. So the only way sometimes we can solve this problem is to find more buyers. That's why it's important to do lead generation because the, uh, my experience is basically every house can be sold. So if the, if, even at a, the price at a, the slightly higher, but it has to be within a fair market value. Mm -hmm. I cannot go in and get the owner to sell it at the price that I think the buyer wants to sell. Because in the buyer's market, the lowest price as far as the lowest price for a buyer becomes the value price because he believes it can go lower. So in the yeah. buyer's probably the buyer's market is that today if I tell the buyer this is five fifty, he thinks it can go lower than five fifty. So and I'm actually struggling right now with the one or two deals where the buyer actually confirms that basically he wants to buy a property at this price, but even when it comes in to get him to get issue a check, he holds back because he say that I, I think it can go lower. 
Mm. That is a challenge that we have. We need to go in and also educate the buyers that uh, this basically is a fair price. If you don't take the, the take advantage now, you will lose them. And now, yeah. uh, you know, once the property is sold, I will go back to those buyers and tell them basically that property is sold. Can I find you other properties? At least they know that basically they cannot go in and keep chasing and pushing the prices down. So yeah. I think for that question, I'll say find buyers that are willing to pay at a price. If not, get the owner to understand that where the market is at so that he might need to reduce the price down. It's a process, you know, let the owner go in and make a decision for, for, for him. Uh, maybe let, let me go back to my slide because uh, one or two more slides before we try to close it up because we have 10 more minutes to go through. Uh, this last, last point is very, uh, very important to, to realize that and he also covers the point that uh, we just did. As an agent, you, you must... Oh, my slide not coming out. Click, click on the screen. Click on the uh, screen. Then you, yeah. It doesn't seem to move. Is it move? Let me just get out. Uh, let me let me stop. The, my slide is not moving. No, let me share again the slide. The slide, uh, the slide is not moving. Hold on, let me just put into the PowerPoint mode. Maybe go to another mode and share that. Okay. Can you see? Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. The now this one here is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be professionally honest. That means. You, you must also go in and realize that actually they own. Hold on. Uh, let me just disable my screen. Okay. Don't be afraid to be professional, professionally honest. Professional honesty is the best approach. You understand where the seller is coming from and being professional enough to tell them the truth, uh, such as the market condition the property condition of the house, the features, the amenities, the buyer and the buyer agent's feedback and comparing other markets, other products in the market. That's why you saw what Ganesh was doing. He was just being honest with the owners. Based on the market condition, this is the challenges. Uh, your property condition at this point, uh, to sell it is going to be a challenge. Are, we, are you willing to do something about it? So buyers and buyer agent's feedback. Those agents that brought the buyers to look at property, this is what they say. You know, the, the, this is, uh, so I hope you're not offended, uh, Mr. Seller, but this is the feedback based on the past to you. And this, sometimes I'll tell them this is the pricing that the, the, the buyer offer. And these are the properties that are in the market. Because if you are not honest with them, then sometimes no one is telling them. Because if they want to sell a house, they might need to work with you. And the challenge is that as an agent, you must get the owners to really trust you with those findings. Initially, in the beginning, the owner might not believe you. But as you go along, he realized actually you're working very hard on the properties and you're providing evidence for him to see that the trust level between you and the owner is building to the point that when you ask him to lower the price down, he realized that you're not trying to, to, you know, to, to get a, uh, you're trying to get the best price possible for him at the present situation. And that's where it really is challenging for you agents. You need to build that rapport and then build a trust so that when it comes to closing, the owner knows that you have his best interest. It comes from the heart, not because I want to make my commission. So this last point is very important as an agent that you are sincere. You know, the, the, you want to serve the, the owners. And again, this, that's all I have. Uh, John, the, maybe go back, uh, go back to you and see how we can take it from here because you have another maybe 10 more minutes only. Yeah, so there are a few questions here that I think want to address. There's one from Hannah who some sellers are following up for a long time when the real buyers come out but offer a much lower selling price. Seller requests to cut our commission. Now, this is, uh, realize that your commission is a part of that, that potentially could be part of that negotiation too. But again, I always know, if you know why your buyer wants to buy and why your seller wants to sell, then you know, between the buyer, the seller, and the agent, who has got more to lose? Who? Who lose more money? Buyer, agent, or seller? Who lost? Who lose more money? Anyone? Put it in the chat box. 
seller lose more money, buyer lose an opportunity. You just lose a commission that you could earn back from another deal. Because this is what you do every day. So in order for you to be in a strong position, make sure you're working with a lot of sellers, a lot of buyers. That's when, that, that is the moment when you are able to tell the seller, I'm sorry, I can't do this right now. This is the best I can do. Why don't you think about it? If you're interested, let me know. If not, I will bring this opportunity to someone else. I'm not threatening him. I'm just telling him, if you're not willing to do this and I'm not going to get paid doing it this way, which we all agree about, that's why having that con contract up front to agree on your selling price or to, oh, sorry, to agree on your commission up front. Most of us may not be taking uh, authorization to sell up front. That's where you are trapped. Does that make sense? So that's, that's where most agents are trapped because they don't go through the process. You need to get your authorization for sale. You inspect the property. You sign it off that say that my fees is 2%. And you make it clear up front, this is my minimum fee. This is my minimum fee. Now, you may want to give a little bit here and discount now that if it's 3% is your minimum fee, stay up front right now. And you must justify your value. If you are more valuable, it's because you are giving more service. You're, op you're offering more things. If they're the holding power, then they're not a motivated seller. Then wait. Sorry, I'm just saying 2% or 3%. Then, then, then just wait. Then move on. If that person is not willing to sell, he is not a motivated seller. Or he's pretending to be not a motivated seller to see how it's kind of like a chess game right now. Who has more to lose? Always remember, the person who has more to lose will always lose. The person who is not afraid to lose will always win. And you will win more than you lose. Sometimes maybe out of 10 deals, you do this, you win 6 deals. So you win more. Right, so I think that's the perspective that you all need to, to have that right now. Okay, what other questions do we have? Help me. John, uh, May, May Wong, I think, uh, earlier, much earlier, when you were talking about the five stages, she asked, at which stage would we stop or discover that the seller's actually not motivated when you were talking about the denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Yeah. So, so let me be clear, that is a state of emotion, right? We need, we need to understand that they're in this state of emotion, and when we work with them, we, we don't take that literally, could, that may not be the fact. So for example, um, no, like, I cannot sell this property. Like, this property is, is, is too cheap like, because you know what? I, I grew up here and my father gave this property to me, so I'm not going to sell cheap. Great. So why do you want to sell? So I, I know he's, she's in the stage of denial right now, right? As an example. So really, John, why would you want to sell this property right now? What is the importance? So I go through with them that need analysis again to understand the why. But I know now they're in a stage of denial, so I understand that. But once you go through that why, hopefully that's the counseling process to bring them uh, to the journey of acceptance. Now, they may not come to acceptance immediately and some people may not get angry. Some people say, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, all depends on that particular individual because all of us are made differently. Now, if you look back at the this profile, if you are a dominant person, the denial and the, the anger could be very high. Okay, when you're working on the DIC, now I think the DIC profiling uh, understanding it's a great tool and a great training to have. Now, if that person is a, for example, an I, maybe it's easier to go through that conversation and at the end of the day, then he will come to that realization faster. Could be one, two days, could be one week. Um, so it really depends, but don't stop listing that property if you know the big why. Find the big why. The goal is find out the big why. Like someone asked, what if they're not making a profit? So ask them, is profit more important or selling the property more important? What happens if you wait for profit and you don't get to sell the property? What happens to you right now? Ask that question, right? Is there any other questions? Uh, one from Mercy, when price declining and we keep trying to put it right, how to convince a buyer to buy now when the purchasing appetite is low? So find motivated buyers. That's a total different topic from today, but I would address you. The way I will address this is this. The more conversations you have to understand the why of the buyer is buying and go through the need analysis. If you cannot buy right now, how we look for you? It's okay. I don't, I, I'm okay. I, I'll wait. And you ask this question right now to them. What, takes, what is it that will take you to buy right now? Let me understand this. What is the right thing to buy? What is the right thing that we can do to help you motivate you to buy right now? I, what, what sort of pricing that you'll be interested to buy right now? You find out so that I can understand better. 
he makes and I always ask a number a number a numerical relationship to a emotional thought is very helpful so for example Mr. Tan would 20% percent below market is something that you're looking at right now what is it that you think is something that is valuable for you that you will make a commitment today now in this question what will happen is this uh, you might have some buyers saying oh, no, no I'm not interested not interested no I'm not sure not sure, not sure. they're not really to commit Maybe when they're not willing to commit to certain things, they're not that highly motivated yet. And it's possible. But you may have some who say that, you know what, for 30%, I will buy right now. For 40%, I will buy right now. You have just found a motivated buyer. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Uh, John, because of time, we might need to see whether anyone have any ahas and then... Uh... Yeah. 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 So stay tuned for some of our new trainings. Any ahas right now? Yeah, Anita wants to be a doctor. There you go, Dr. Bugadesh. You are, in, you are, you are <laughs> inspiring all of us to be doctors right now. 20% below market is subjective market in which year? Current market right now, current market price. Any other question? Any other ahas? Any other ahas? Any ahas that you all have from the conversation today? How many of you thought, think that the series that we are doing all this training is really adding value to your business? If you think that we are adding value right now, say yes. Someone should say too good, good. Yeah, there you go. Now, or one of the things that I can ask you to help me is uh, my virtual support will be keying in a link uh, for uh, the a survey done. Uh, can I have virtual support? Please do the feedback link. I, I, I ask that you will help us to improve better if you could send that feedback uh, to us in that link um, so that we know what is working, what is not working, and what are the topics that you we would bring to you in this season of MCO so that it will add value to you and it will support you in your business. So these are some of the things that um, we want to hear from you so quickly. If you don't mind, at the end of this training, do this for me. Can I have the second, the, the other slide first? Um, another slide. There you go. Um, both of them, these two doctors here, are here to support you in your business. Um, they have committed 30 minutes uh, for agents who are in production. If you are an agent right now and you are in production, meaning you must be a production agent, not a rookie agent who has not done any transaction, a production agent, um, feel free to reach out to them. This is their emails and their contact numbers. Um, and they will be happy to share a 30 minutes meeting with you to run through your business and do some audits and try to understand how they can help you to point you to the right direction. So I think one of the key things that you could agree with me that these are all going to be doctors that will help you not only for buyers and sellers, but for your business, right? So, so, so please, I'll keep that slide here right now so that you guys can take time to copy down the context and all that. Appreciate the feedback. We've got some sessions uh, being some, someone asking, uh, I think, Kyo Bing Liang, Bing Liang, you are asking us, would we have more training? Absolutely. We are now in the process of uh, uh, working out uh, virtual training KW Malaysia 2.0. It will be more exciting. It will be more packed with many trainings. There is also going to be regional trainings and market center level trainings that we will be announcing soon, somewhere at the end of this week. Um, we will be going into, as I repeat, we will be talking uh, in Bahasa Melayu, in Chinese, Mandarin, Cantonese, and also in English. So we'll be having easily more than 10 sessions coming up your way right as we talk uh, uh, within this week, we'll be announcing because I will have meetings with my regional team and we will bring you the best content we can. And you'll be surprised with some of the speakers that you may not have met before will be coming on stage to share their experiences and some of the content that we have from KW University. Um, yeah. Tamil James, sorry, haven't, haven't found someone yet to do it. Uh, unless Ganesh is willing to go that direction, I will be very willing to work with him. But it, it's still English, Chinese, and Malay right now. Okay. Um, any other any other ahas right now before we end the call? Can I just have the link for that? Uh, follow us in our Facebook right now so that you can keep uh, contact with us and have the latest updates. Um, and as well as we are not stopping here. Let me repeat, we are not stopping what we are doing here right now. It is ongoing. The battle is still on. We are going to go ahead with more trainings, more content. Um, for refill agents, look out for messages on workplace. You will be positioned in groups for mastermind. Most of you will get opportunity to work with me on a mastermind session on your business. And that will be happening very, very soon. 
uh, but that's exclusively only for Redfield A- KW Malaysia agents. Uh, where you are part of our family, we have deeper conversation about your business. So look out for workplace of uh, agents, of uh, uh, guys, so that you know that we are in contact. And look out for my next announcement, our, our weekly announcement that's coming up soon. Right? Any more ahas? Any more ahas? Share, keep on sharing the ahas right now. Got a little bit of time as you're doing the survey. Can I have the survey link back again on, on the chat box so that everyone um, is able to participate in that survey and we believe that we are an agent-centric business and agents' perspective and agents' feedback is very critical to our business as leadership. You are helping us to do our job better by giving us the best feedback ever. Okay? There you go. See, see George and Ganesh, you are you're, you're officially doctor right now. I, 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 I now knight you by the power vested in me, I now proclaim that you are the doctors in Redfield right now. There you go. <laughs> yeah, can we have their, their picture and their contact again on screen, please? Thank you. Yeah, there you go. And I promise you, they will not hesitate to support you and help you guys. Yes, thank you, Neil, for feeling very energized. It is the positive uh, onward focus mindset that we need to have that even in this lockdown, there are many things that we can still do in our business. It is not the end. Now look out for technology related business they will, uh, training. There will be some exclusive training just for KW Malaysia agents uh, pertaining to technology as well um, in terms of how we are going to use contacts on command. So these are some of the things that uh, we will do it exclusively only for KW Malaysia agents. agents. Okay, I think time's up. Time's up. We are just hitting at 12 p.m. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you all have a great uh, lunch and a great rest of the day. Stay tuned for some of our trainings. We will be posting certain trainings on Facebook tomorrow and Thursday and Friday. So those who are not part of KW Malaysia, um, feel free to go to our page. We will be having, especially sharings about shift from James Shaw from the, the, the region of uh, North Florida, where he will be sharing. Um, he is the guru of shift. So he'll be sharing certain content. So please stay tuned for that video on our review page right now. We'll be sharing some of those series of trainings on review page. And for review agents, please go back to workplace and go through the link for the Google Drive where all the videos are there from the US, um, you guys will, will have that access to full access. But for non review agents, you'll get certain limited access on our Facebook page. So have a good one, guys. I will see you at the next virtual training soon. Bye.